Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco, coming to you from my beautiful Marriott hotel room in hot Atlanta. That's right. I'm in Atlanta for Blade Show 2021. This was the 40th year of Blade Show, and uh, today is the last day, Sunday, which I will be skipping so that I can drive back home to the D.C. area. But uh, man, I don't know if I could take another day. Honest to goodness, I don't know if I could take another day. I never thought I'd say this, but too many knives. I'm just kidding. Not too many knives. Uh, Just not the right walking shoes, I think. Um, Blade Show is immense. Um, I'm sure I don't have to tell most of you this. uh, In walking around, I met a lot of people uh, that I've met online, viewers and um, commenters and people that have been on the show, guests on the show. And uh, no one could believe that it was my first Blade Show. They're like, this is your thing. You're, you, don't you call yourself the Blade Junkie, the Knife Junkie? What are you doing? And uh, so, yeah, I, I had to admit it freely to everyone that I was totally overwhelmed. And uh, I mean, overwhelmed in the best way. Talk about a kid in the most gigantic candy store. It was like going to Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. So, okay, so if you haven't been here... It's a giant, giant room full of booths and tables. The booths are by some of the bigger companies and the bigger makers. Uh, They're they're larger. They have backdrops and, you know, a little bit more space, a little more area to lay out their knives and to have staff behind the tables. And then the uh, and then the tables themselves, there's a whole area, acres and acres of uh, independent makers who have tables and you just kind of wend your way back and forth through all these tables and booths. And uh, and you realize, I realized just walking through there, how many incredibly talented people there are out there who are just knife lovers, obsessed with knives, obsessed with making them in various stages of their careers, in various stages of their skill levels. Uh, but I, everyone had something unique and interesting to bring to the table, (laughs) the table. And the funny thing is, is I came here, I think, uh, you know, from listening uh, past episodes, I said, I'm I'm not going to buy anything at this Blade Show. I'm, I'm just going to go and, you know, try and, you know, meet some people and, and, and experience it, but I'm not going to turn this into a, uh, you know, a materialistic uh, buying fest. And uh, well, I didn't, I wouldn't say that I went overboard, but I would say I spent 100% more money than I expected to and um, got some things that I was not expecting. If you, if you told me, if you asked me, what are you going to buy if you go to Blade Show and you're going to spend money? I would not have necessarily thought that I would have gotten some of the things that I got, but being at people's tables, being at people's booths, you become moved by some of their work, maybe stuff that you've only seen on Instagram pages or on their web pages. <clears throat> and uh, you, you just, I don't know, you're moved to get something. Wow, this is unique. I've never seen anything like this. And now that I have it in hand, I know, I know it must be mine. And uh, so that, that happened a bit. And I'll show off uh, some of the things I got in a minute. I didn't go crazy, did not go overboard, but I've realized now that I got, uh, I got, a, I got one kind of thing from a number of different important knife and edged categories. That's a hint that it's not all knives. Um, but I, I have to say, the most uh, you'll have to excuse my voice. It's a little, uh, it's it's still holding up. But I've done so much talking this weekend. My main area of interest, of course, was seeing the knives and, and experiencing them in hand, but really was to to introduce myself to people that I've spoken to online and to shake a lot of hands of these great guests that I've had on. Uh, harder to do was to pick out um, people who are listeners of the show, but a number of them came up and introduced themselves to me. And uh, it was so great. You know, it was so great to meet, meet people. For instance, uh, Ben, uh, I'm sorry, Brent Smith, uh, who's a patron of mine, uh, probably the first 
um, introduced himself to me and he is making his own knives and, and he's only made a few so far, but he had one on his hip. And of course I'm like, Oh, what are you carrying? You know, cause we're, you're in the one place in the world at the one time in this country anyway, where everyone's got a knife on their hip and you can just ask, what are you carrying? And he pulled it out and I was like, God, this is beautiful. Who, who made this? And he said, I did. And, uh, well, anyway, so it was just a great experience to meet him in person, and and uh, I met a number of other guys in person. Super Steel Steve, uh, I saw him walking down the the line, and and I we talked, and man, what a great character he is, and uh, yeah, well, lots of lots of others, and uh, um, so anyway, uh, great to meet them, but also really a great experience to go up to Andrew Demko and shake his hand after speaking to him a bunch of times on the show. And uh, and likewise with a, a giant list of people. Um, last night I went to the pit, uh, which you've heard about, the legendary pit. Now uh, after after Friday night, I was so exhausted. I came back to my room, which is not attached to the convention center. I assumed that since I booked my hotel room through the Blade Show uh, 2021 website, you know, this is our official. Our official lodging, I assumed it was in that really cool, um, you know, sort of courtyard. Uh, I can't remember the name. What is it? I think it's also a Marriott uh, that's attached to the convention center. So you can just kind of get out of bed and <laughs> go and walk the the acres of knives. Wasn't that place. It was about a mile and a half away. Great place, you know. Uh, but uh, I, so I didn't end up going to the pit that first night. The pit is the giant sort of courtyard area around which the entire hotel is built. And um, it's a legendary gathering place uh, post blade show of uh, patrons and knife makers to get together, mix and mingle, have some drinks and talk knives and show off their purchases and such. And the first night I was like, I just, I just can't do it. And then last night, Saturday night, I came back and changed and took my notes from the day and everything like that. And then I went back over there and I'm so glad I did. I had to muster the energy. You know, I'm not the, I'm not the youngster I once was. So I had to muster the energy to go back over there. And I'm really glad I did. I, uh, I ended up talking for quite a while with Matt Chase of Hogtooth Knives, the man who's making my 50th uh, birthday knife and actually bumped into him there while he was shopping for stag for the handle for my knife. And that was really cool to see because it's not just knives there. It's also um, material purveyors and steel purveyors and such. And uh, so I bumped into him, talked to him for quite a while. And his good friend, uh, Jonathan, who is a uh, uh, also a knife maker, a, a forged in fire winner. Uh, he did the boar sword, the big great sword with the wavy uh, bladed end. So that was great to talk to him. And then I, I saw um, Michael Janich, I was like, oh man, I got to talk to Michael Janich, you know, because had him on the show a few times and I've always really admired the Yojimbo, the Yojumbo. And uh, I came up and we had about a half hour conversation and um, revealed to me that uh, they're making a mini Yojimbo. I'm not supposed to, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say that, but hey, it'll be, it'll be out there soon enough, I'm sure. And uh, so it was really great to talk to him. Um yeah, so that was really my my favorite part of this whole thing was actually going up to people and talking to them. Okay, I'll tell you something totally nerdy. Um, as you know, whenever I take a road trip and I drove down here, I carry the uh, the SOCOM Elite because it's got the glass breaker. It was the first knife I ever had with a glass breaker. And so I turned it into my road trip knife. But as I'm sure you guessed, I didn't travel here with just that. But uh, <laughs> I, I brought a bunch of knives of people that I've interviewed because I was like, I want to have it in my pocket when I introduce myself to them. So, so I'm going to be like, hey, uh, Michael Martin of uh, American Blade Works. I oh, love my, you know, and uh, I did that a little bit. And then I realized that's just it's too much work. It's too much effort. And it's too many, too much weight because I have a backpack on the whole time. And I'm, I'm, I, I brought a lot more stuff in with me than I thought. I needed. Um, but uh, yeah, so I carried a bunch of knives down here, um, but only really 
ended up carrying some of the ones I bought. So I will show those in a, in a second. But what, what I'm going to do is I had a chance to, as I said, meet way more people than I got video from. But I got uh, about eight little quick clips from some people that uh, uh, that I feel closeness to, I don't know, you know, people that I, I thought I really wanted to catch up with. And it was great to do that. I talked to Bastian Cove of Bastinelli Knives. Uh, I talked to An David C. Anderson of Knife Center and, of course, uh, his own Nordic Knives. And I got to check out one of his, which you'll see in the video. It, and uh, Douglas Esposito, attention to detail. I talked to Andrew Demko. And last night at the pit, I talked with his brother, John Demko, for quite a while. Going to have him on the show to talk about growing that business. It seems like it's been an epic journey so far. And you know I don't use the word journey or epic lightly. Uh, Chuck Cadretis, I talked to Michael Martin. Of course, uh, Ben Belkin of Jack Wolf Knives and Laren Thomas. Uh, we, and we, uh, I'm going to have him back on to talk about Magna Cut. It was really cool to uh, catch up with Ben and check out uh, the um, prototypes of his knives. And I got to meet his father. <laughs> that was great, too. He's a great guy. Um, but before we get to those, let me just give you, I'll give you a tease, a sneak peek at the uh, at my purchases here. I don't want to go too into depth. I don't have great lighting here. I don't have the knife cam where I can really get it up in your face. Uh, but I'll show you some of the things I got because really, like I said, some things I wasn't expecting and some very unique items. The very first thing I bought was quite a unique item. And let me show you that. Where is it? Right over here. I got this uh, from this gentleman who I invited onto the show. His name is John Hayes, and he's a former um, like high-end product designer. He was telling me, for instance, he designed these uh, adjustable depth pools for these trillion-dollar houses somewhere, and uh, he sort of found himself wanting to design knives, and he had a lot of cool knives out there, but he was one of the first people uh, whose table that wasn't a big like a spider co or a benchmate or that I stopped at. And he had this thing that was so unique and it reminded me of some of the weapons that the OSS guys carried like lapel knives in this. So he, he makes these collar stay knives. <laughs> so if you wear a dress shirt, you know, you have a collar stay that you put under in that little pocket in the collar and uh, you know, it keeps your collar stiff so you can look, gentlemanly and he makes these little titanium knives little chisel ground titanium knives to fit in your collar and i thought you know why don't i uh, where have you been all my life <laughs> i have to wear these shirts for work why do i not have a collar stay knife i'm not going to worry too much about trying to focus because i will show it off in a close-up video but i mean how cool and innovative is that? And he said uh, he destroyed a bunch of shirts until he was able to find these little tip covers. So you can even slip it in there with the tip cover, and uh, and then you're then you're good to go. So yeah, collar stay knife, kind of an important thing for every gentleman who wants to be prepared to have. Am I not? Am I not right? And uh, I bumped into Marianne Help. I didn't bump into her. I sought her out. I went. I saw at the TRM booth. Marianne Halpern, sorry for this plastic sound, um, and we talked for a while, and I'm looking forward to having her back on the show. Uh, I saw their new shadow knife. Oh my God, it's amazing! It's a it's a really broad bladed uh, EDC folder that works on an ambidextrous bar lock. You know, similar to the access lock, similar but better, <laughs> or I should say, similar and very well done, uh, like the access lock. And after a while. Um, I was looking at the Atom scales because that's the only TRM I had. And she very generously um, gave me a set. And check these out. They're the 3D, 3D milled contoured um, wing pattern, but in burlap micarta. So very happy to have this. Be putting these on the, on the Atom as soon as I get home. Thank you, Marianne. If you are listening, what a great woman she is and what a great company. I, I met uh, another person that works for her and then uh, Les Halpern and um, great, great folks, great knives. Oh, my God, that shadow. If you're interested, you must because it's, you know, it is all that. All that in a bag of chips, as we used to say in the 90s. Uh, S&W Metalworks. 
stopped by this gent's shop. I was just uh, his table. I was just walking by. Hmm, there we go. I was just walking by, and these caught my eye. He's got an interesting logo I'm seeing only kind of right now. It's one of those African throwing uh, throwing knives with all the different blades. Now, I did not see any of those uh, at his table. He had a couple of really innovative uh, folders and then some really beautiful handmade uh, kitchen knives and such. But this is a cool little uh, slip joint. It's, got, it's a folded over piece of steel, folded over piece of mild steel here, coated with a uh, Cerakote. And then it's got this cool little mechanism here. So the, the spring is actually the back of the blade and it just locks in there and uh, locks in there with those two, two uh, pins there. I just thought that was a really cool and innovative little, little thing. So I got this knife and I'm going to be checking out more of his work online. I think it's really cool. He had, he made an EDC folder, uh, much more complicated for me to describe, but it also had the spring cut into the top um, <clears throat> and you unlock it by pushing that uh, this piece to the side. It locks in kind of almost like a reverse liner lock, like the liner is actually on the blade itself. So interesting stuff from a company, s and Metalworks, that I'd never heard of. Um, but interestingly enough, when I was talking with uh, Doug Ritter at the end of the show, uh, he he mentioned the guy. He's like, yeah, we're we got innovative people all over the place. There's this guy, you know, and he described this knife, and and I just thought it was interesting. I mean, someone that I've never heard of um, is making an impression. Uh, not that that's uh, not that that's uh, a surprising thing, but just it was cool to hear that someone else felt the same way. All right, I'll move on. And on on the first day, I also got uh, a Dylan Grace knife. Dylan Grace is a guy that I've been following on Instagram for quite a while and he forges his knives and they're all really unique and kind of modern rustic looking. And I got this uh, beautiful sort of scalpel-esque knife. I can't remember what he calls it, but look at that beautiful handle. Of course, I'll go into detail under the knife cam with, uh, with all of these so you can see what they really look like. But, um, yeah, DG Blade Co., I think is what he goes by on Instagram. And he just makes these really, really cool knives. Some of them extremely tactical, and you know, that that always appeals to me. And then others more practical, like this one. And that handle, this is Buckeye Burl with resin. And I grew up in Ohio, and it's called the Buckeye State. And, and I didn't even know that when I picked this up and decided to buy this one. But it, it must have been fate, right? So, and then another thing he does is this sort of water-molded, leather sheath on all of his uh, work. And it really is like organic Kydex. It really fits in there beautifully and uh, will stay in there. So I really like his sheaths and I like his whole aesthetic. And it was great to see him there. I was like, oh my God, I know this guy. I've been following him for years. So I had to buy it. <laughs> I had to, it was a moral imperative. And then on that first day, I also bought, I went to the attention to detail mercantile uh, um, booth and uh, saw Douglas Esposito's amazing Mark One Model 1s. They have come a long way since the one that I have, and the one that I have is sweet. And uh, yeah, he's been doing, putting bearings in and just his machining and everything has gotten more complex and uh, refined, and his work is beautiful. Uh, but I wasn't at that point up for, uh, you know, buying a, a beautiful custom folder. But his wife, his life partner, I'm not sure if they're married, uh, Stacia Jennings um, does the, the software side of it. She does Hanks and all sorts of cool stuff. And um, she makes these really beautiful, um, these are knife holders. Those are some of the knives I brought with me. So, uh, so I got one to be civilized. You know, I carry that, I, when, I, when I travel with my knives, I, uh, I always end up shoving them in this thing and, and they stay away from each other, but it's, it's, it's a, it's a sleeve. It's a document sleeve I got from Home Depot. And this is just way classier. Attention to detail mercantile. Excited about that. So day two, Saturday, I was like, I know that I need to get this one thing. I bumped into Andrew Demko on the way out of the, uh, of the first day. 
Uh, he was headed towards the pit with his with his crew, and I saw he was carrying two tomahawks, and I was I was like, "What are those? <laughs> I gotta know." I've been into tomahawks recently, as you as you know, uh, from that Wingard wearable uh, Empress tomahawk that I have, and he's I just recently interviewed him. He's going to be on the show soon. Great guy. That's Zach Wingard. He was not down here this year, but uh, he's sort of stoked to this fascination uh, with tomahawks and. Uh, so Elmer Roosh is the man who made the the Demko uh, tomahawks that uh, well the the tomahawks that Andrew Demko had, and apparently he is uh, quite the legend in the hand forged tomahawk um, game. So I I wanted to get one, so I went by his table and saw the one that I want. I love these sta- uh, spiked tomahawks like uh, Iroquois Nation tomahawks from the northeastern woodlands. This has a, about a 16-inch haft of hickory. It's wedged in there, not not a friction fit. It's light. It's quick. I mean, this is going to change the game in all the, the tomahawk fights I get in because I find that a lot of modern tomahawks are really, you know, they're beautiful and great for, for heavy utility tasks. But for, you know, for the mano a mano sort of situations I find myself in all the time, they're a little heavy. And this, I find the recovery is way quicker. <laughs> yes, of course, you know I'm joking. Uh, but I had to get this. And so I did. And uh, Elmer Roosh, uh, one of the many people that I spoke to that I, I uh, strong-armed into, I didn't strong-arm him, but I, I asked a lot of people to come onto the show that do interesting work. And this gentleman uh, is, is a legend in this field here, and he's going to be coming on. So I'm very excited about that. But I got this beautiful tomahawk from him, and that started the day off the right way. And so all day long, this was kind of sticking out proud from my backpack. And I was like, I know. I know. It's cool, isn't it? So, yeah, Elmer Roosh. Um, and then I got a knife for my brother. Uh, and uh, I'm revealing it to him. This is for his birthday, which is in August. But I got him the the new Demco Knives AD 2025. Uh, 20.5. This is the scaled down version of the AD20. You all know about this. I'm always late to the game, but uh, this thing is awesome. It is everything that the AD20 is just pared down. And the action is beautiful. They had this, these made in Taiwan, and we all know Taiwan has some amazing uh, knife manufacturers. Uh, that Shark Lock is just amazing. And you should have seen the throngs of people at the Demco uh, Demco Knives booth. It was just like a mad dash. First of all, it was a mad dash to get there, to get to the custom knives. Uh, and then they had a whole bunch of these in this and the shark's foot. And I just couldn't help it. I had to get the clip point again. I like that shark's foot blade, but man, this, this is a, a beautiful clip point. So I got this for my brother, Vic. And... Um, I'm excited to give that to him. Surprise. <laughs> Happy birthday, Vic. So that's uh, that's that. Two more things, and then we'll move on to some some interviews, some, some quick uh, interviews there. I walked into the second room. Yes, on the second day, I discovered, oh, there's a second room. <laughs> oh, shit. I, I've been, like, totally, uh, you know, overwhelmed with the first room, and now there's a second room. And uh, basically, the first person I saw when I walked in, I was like, oh, wow. Those look like um, those look like Dirk Pinkerton knives, and wouldn't you know, it was Dirk Pinkerton. Surprise, surprise! And I got this most amazing Pical style knife from him. It is beautiful. It carries. I carried it all last night. Carries in the waistband really, really nicely. It's got a beautiful uh, orange and ochre micarta handle. Oh, I almost ran my thumb up onto the blade there. Really, you're supposed to hold it like this. But uh, this beautiful um, Pakal style knife, kind of a uh, kind of an off-centered or off-kilter Persian style. I mean, that's what I always think of with these Pakal style uh, knives. You grip it, and it comes out of your your hand a little bit uh, in that forward motion or forward angle. And uh, it's nitro V, and just beautifully, beautifully made. Really 
really beautifully handmade. And if you follow him on Instagram, uh, you can see some of the process he goes through. So uh, it was just really great to to see this and to meet him because he's been on the show and to meet him in person and and uh, and buy this. I love this thing. This is going to be one of my my uh, fixed blade EDCs from now on. And then I found myself, it didn't come with the clip. And I was like, gee, I wonder if there's any place I can get a clip. And of course, you're a blade show. There's probably a million. But when I said that, I saw the ulti clip stand and walked up and a very, very helpful gentleman there uh, showed me around the ulti clip. Uh, I have one, but I've never actually put it on a knife. And he he gave me the pitch and and I bought this from him and he put it on my knife. Very, very nice guys over there at the Ulti Clip stand. Um, so Pinkerton Pical Ulti Clip. And then lastly, I was like, I gotta, oh, I gotta introduce uh, introduce myself to Joseph Vero. And wouldn't you know, <laughs> I didn't walk away without getting the new synapse. And uh, man. I got it in natural micarta. He offered to oil it, but I said, no, leave it as it is. And I will, I will put my own personal filth signature on it. And uh, look at that thing. So I'm here to tell you that all the hype about uh, Vero engineering is so worthy. This knife is amazing. I mean, it is a, and the, it's incredible. I can't wait to, I haven't even carried it yet. I can't wait to carry it. I can't wait to talk about it on the show. Um, he's really doing amazing, amazing stuff. Um, so thank you, Joseph, for uh, making such great knives. Thank you, everyone out there, for making such great knives. Other people I met, uh, I mean, a lot of people I, I met, but um, chief among them is Ernest Emerson. I introduced myself um, after having had him on the show a couple times and after being a hero of mine for quite some time. And when they say, don't meet your heroes, it's not always true. He was not a disappointment. He was an amazing guy. And then he gave a little seminar called uh, Quest for the Uncommon Man, I think it was. And basically he was he was giving us guys, uh, you know, that the talking to that, that our dads hopefully gave us about, uh, you know, being forthright and being disciplined and taking on responsibility and uh, all the things that you don't hear much in our culture these days. Uh, you know, those are things that uh, women could definitely apply to their lives too. But um, it seems like there's been, a, you know, sort of a conscious weakening of men over the past couple of decades. And he was there to, to, to bolster us up and remind us that, uh, you know, pushing yourself and taking on responsibility and being disciplined is important. Uh, and so, you know, I was a I was a, a pig in poop there. It was great to meet him and to meet all these guys. Um, so, in in uh, in meeting all these people, uh, I did grab a couple of seconds of video from from a number of them. But uh, you know, really, these people are working the table and and really focusing on on getting their knives in the hands of people who don't know who they are, perhaps or. Who are new to them so i didn't i didn't want to get the camera in too many faces and bother too many people but uh well i did a few so here they are the get upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases get upside is an app you put on your smartphone and whenever you need to get gas search your area for savings claim your discount fill up your tank and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone and that's it you've just got cash back visit the knifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving again that's the knifejunkie.com slash save on gas so at the demco knives booth I saw Andrew uh, speaking with someone. I was like, he looks familiar. And then I, I, uh, I got this from my mother. I have some pretty good uh, eavesdropping uh, capabilities. And I listened to the conversation and I heard Magna Cut, Magna Cut, Magna Cut. I was like, that's Laren Thomas of Knife Steel Nerds. So uh, after, you know, at a, a tasteful break in their conversation, I introduced myself, said, hey, Laren, Bob DeMarco, we talked a long time ago. Um, Congratulations on your new Magna Cut Steel. How's it going? Turned into a conversation. And he said, why haven't you asked me back on to the show? I heard you mention on one of your shows that you were going to call me. And I'm waiting for the phone to ring. You know, he was he was busting my chops. And uh, so we'll have him back on to talk about Magna Cut. But uh, I asked him in the minute, you know, if we, could, if we could grab a quick word from him. And he was gracious enough to do so. 
I'm here with Andrew Demko and Laren Thomas. Gentlemen, how you doing? Good. How are you? I'm great. I'm doing great. So I'm going to talk to you in a minute. Okay. But uh, Laren, congratulations on Magna Cut. How's Thank everything you. been going with it? Uh, it's been going great. Uh, guys like Andrew are telling me that everybody wants knives in it. They're selling like hotcakes. Uh, it seems to be working really well for the manufacturers. The tests by knife makers are all reporting back that it's cutting really well. Uh, so I, I think it really is a big step forward in, in steel performance, so it's been really exciting. So who are the who are the makers and the manufacturers who already have it in hand and have knives in Magna Cut? <laughs> well, I don't even know them all because I'm not in charge of sales, but Spyderco definitely has some, Chris Reeve Knives has some, and countless custom makers. Uh, we're really short on steel, so we're trying to get as much out as we can, uh, but we're limited. Everybody wants some and we only have so much, so we're trying to make more. Okay, so you're basically, uh, to all the people who are clamoring for it, you're going to tell them what? Uh, keep waiting. <laughs> Good response. Be patient. Alrighty, sir. Well, we're going to talk to you shortly in short order on the Knife Junkie podcast, and people will get to see your handsome face. I can't wait. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Laren has been tearing it up with the Magna Cut Steel, and I'm very happy for him, and I really look forward to talking to him about this steel he's formulated that both knife makers and knife manufacturers are scrambling and clamoring to get their hands on. So after speaking with him, I had a chance to talk with Andrew Demko. Uh, he's such a great guy. He's a very personable, like all of these people I, I re-met, just such great people. Um, but anyway, it was great to talk to him about uh, the 20.5, the shark lock in general. And of course, I had to talk about my AD20 that I recently got. So here's Andrew Demko. All right, I'm here with Andrew Demko at the Demko Knives booth at Blade Show 2021. How's it going, Andrew? Very good, how are you? I'm doing well, how's the show been? It's been a good show? Great, great, we have a great crowd, uh, a lot of energy, and I think everybody was ready to get out and uh, get to some knife shows. Yeah, no doubt. Well, when I came in here, I saw a giant crowd around this booth. What is everyone clamoring for right now? 8020s, customs, both customs and MGs, but in particular, Magna Cut. Guys, we're camping out for Magna Cut, so yeah. So have right. uh, have you made many eighty uh, twenties in Magna Cut? No, I ha I was able to order six sheets of Magna Cut, and we just started cutting into it. And I I was lucky enough to get sample material, uh, so we had some of that too. But most of the Magna Cut is still in process at, at the shop, um, so we only had a few here. But it, it's every way is after it's hot. So uh, we were just talking with Laren Thomas a, a minute ago. What are the what are the characteristics of Magna Cut that uh, are so appealing? I think that it is. You know, if you looked at a graph, you see it's always edge holding up here, toughness down here, and corrosion somewhere. It, they're they're always very very opposite of each other. But Magna Cut is like it's it's very very level. And not only is it level, uh, or proportionally very similar, but it's at a high level. You know, there are stills like, for example, XHP is very, is very equivalent it's, as far as toughness, edge holding, and, and corrosion resistance. But let's say it's at, at a five. Well, Magna Cut is similar to that, but it's up there at maybe a seven or eight. So uh, it's well-rounded and, and really great for my, my kind of knives. Do you find it uh, easier to work with or less difficult? Well, Laren described it to me as a, a stainless 4V. Now, you know 3V is the, the tough steel. 4V is like the, the bigger brother of 3V with more edge holding. And I was like, yeah. I still have 104V at home that I'm not grinding because it's so hard to grind. And I, you know my thing about not liking to grind knives that much. So the 4V is four years old because I don't want to grind it. And he said, it's going to be like 4V. And I was like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> but guess what? It's awesome. It's better than expected in grinding, so I have no issues. So, okay, so the real hot news is the AD 20.5. Yes. Tell, tell me about the inspiration behind coming up with these and how they've been going. So I wanted to I wanted to have a knife at a lower price point. It is imported from Taiwan. Um, you know, 16 years at cold still gave me a lot of contacts and a lot of knowledge in production. And um, Basically, I wanted to offer this knife, it's $150, as opposed to the super popular MG that we make in-house, retails at $425. So it has, it's scaled down in all regards. 
but it has all the same features and looks, um, but at a retail of $150. Sharks foot and clip point available. And these do come with lefty pocket clips, really great packaging, 10A blade, rivery, uh, heat treat at standstill frame, all heat treat at locking parts, and bearings. Beautiful. What do you uh, what do you like about 10A, Aus 10A? Aus 10A, what I like about it is I can keep the price point lower because it's a fine blankable steel, uh, meaning it doesn't need to be laser cut in the machine so I keep the cost down. However, it's the highest level of any any more than this, you can't blank it. So we eventually, we hope to come out with this and premium, more premium steels, but the price will be, you know, a bit more. So we're gonna have, this is our, this is our entry level, so to speak. Next year, you might see this in 35BN or 3B, something like that. So we're, we're starting in levels. It doesn't really make all that much sense to start here, right? You gotta start here and work your way up. And that's what we're doing with this. So we're introducing it in 10A. I just bought one for my brother for his birthday coming up, um, and I want one for myself, so I'll probably double back and get one for me. Uh, what do you think, what do you attribute to the popularity of the Shark Lock, or, or the 8020 in general? You have a lot of very popular knives, yeah. but why is this one the, the biggest hit? Well, I think because it's ambidextrous, which is nice. And I know they say only like 6% of the population or 7 is left-handed. Well, I don't know. I get a lot of lefty, sell a lot of lefty clips. I don't know if people like carrying lefty or they like that it is ambidextrous. But mainly, it has all the durability, all the strength of all my other locks or more. But it's super easy to operate. And you know what? As you know, it's really fun. And that, that's a lot of it, you know? It's almost like you had a toy when you were a kid that wasn't fun, and you had a toy that your kid was fun. Which one? Which one are you playing with more? So uh, I think that's what it is. This is—it's got it all: performance and cool factor and fidgety fun. All right, one last question: yeah. What's your favorite part about Blade Show and all this? The crowd and the people, definitely. Awesome. All right, Andrew. Thank you so much. Best of luck with the, the rest of the Blade Show, and you know, can't wait to see what you come up with next. Thank you. Ever visit the knives online in the hopes of satisfying your need to possess them in the real world? Then you have a problem. You are a knife junkie. I got a chance to catch up with Virginia knife maker Douglas Esposito. He heads up Attention to Detail Mercantile and is the maker of my very first custom folder, the Mark I. I love that knife, and he has gone crazy with uh, the Mark I since I bought the, the one that I got. He's been doing all sorts of beautiful inlays, uh, different texturings, different in, uh, inlay patterns, and different blade grinds. And uh, had a chance to talk with him and his, uh, his wife, Stacia. We're here at Attention to Detail Mercantile with Douglas Esposito. Douglas, how's it going? It's good, having a great show, man. Happy to be out of the, out of the shop and seeing everybody. So tell us what you got new here since last we spoke. Um, it's got some new textures, some some jig titanium, and some new inlays and shields. Um, I'm really getting into the, the different textures and the like, kind of the the iconic memento mori things with the skull and crossbone and the bottle and the coffin and the cherry blossoms, crosses, fortalies, that kind of stuff. So some new materials with the uh, Chad Nichols um, Kenobi tie things like that got some Zerk polished and all black and looking pretty so last time we talked uh, you were doing everything on really old machines things have changed a bit for you what? no pretty much all the same machines oh yeah yeah you still you have a CNC now I do yep okay yep when I started doing the folders I got I got one yep okay. All right, but also now you're doing, uh, I've, I've noticed a change in the action. What's going on Bearings. in the action? So what challenges does do, making a folder with bearings present? It, it's not any harder that, you know, there's one more operation cutting the bearing pockets and making sure that they're milled to depth and uh, making, making those adjustments. Um, I personally like washers better because I clean game and, do, and my knives get filthy and nasty and it's easier to clean. But everybody likes the bearings, so we've been doing the bearings on the on the flippers. So how did uh, last year, 2020, affect things? 
I spent a lot of time in the shop. <laughs> that, that was it. That's yeah, a lot, a lot of time in the shop. So is this blade show going well? Yeah, going great. This is we're on track to be our best show ever. You know, it's a, uh, Fort Worth was great, the ice show, and this is this is going really well. And it's just it's just great to see everybody. So I've noticed Tantos and another interesting grind. Tell me a little bit about that. Oh, the bat wing. Yeah, so the bat wing is a, it's a compound grind. Um, I did it off of the Hisatsu. Uh, I didn't invent it. There's plenty of other people, you know, mixed rider with the Nightmare grind and, and uh, Steve Ryan and, you know, cats like that that have been doing the compound grinds. I just uh, tried my hand on it and it's a little bit different without the, the finger hole in there. So it looks cool, it performs well. So it's just basically a Hisatsu blade with the com compound grind. Awesome. So I see you have Stacia here with you. Yes. Back from Iraq, in oh, one piece, you. everything thank, attached. Thank God. And you are showing some of your tanks and knife rolls. I got one of these earlier. Uh, beautiful work. Thank you. Thanks, all right, guys. Visit The Knife Junkie at theknifejunkie.com to catch all of our podcast episodes, videos, photos, and more. After buying the knife roll from Stacia, I was uh, determined I will be back to get one of his knives. Not this show probably next show because um, they've come a long way from the knife that I have. And the one that I have, as I mentioned earlier, is incredible. So his uh, action, his uh, lockup, his patterning, his texturing, his blade grinding, everything, you know, which was really excellent before has gotten even more so. And I, I love that, uh, that pattern. Um, so it's got to get one of those. It's, it's another must on the list. Next, I went by Chuck Gadratis's table. Chuck Gadratis. Sorry, Chuck. I know you've been dealing with that your whole life. Uh, I had to see the Marlin knife, and I had to see uh, the Switch Army knives, and got a chance to check those out and really talk to him and, and get a close-up on that incredible Marlin automatic knife. Check this out. I'm here with Chuck Gadredis. Chuck, how's it going? Good morning, Bob. I'm doing great. So how's uh, Blade Show been going? Blade Show is going awesome this year. I sold out of my knives uh, by Friday evening. Uh, you never know how it's going to go when you're working up to a show, but today uh, is Saturday, and I just have one knife to display before it goes to its own. What are the knives you brought with you? Um, I brought a variety this year, and I tend to do that, so I have something for everyone. I brought some ballet songs, some of my Switch Army Switchblades. Um, I brought a couple of figural automatics. One was the Alicanto, the Eagle Knife, and the Swordfish Automatic. So we talked about all of those knives uh, when you were on the podcast, uh, but I see you have the, the Swordfish Knife here with you. Can you show us how it works? Sure. So this is a liner lock automatic. So you unlock it, close the blade. It's a Marlin when it's closed. It's got Damascus bolsters, Damascus fins, mammoth ivory scales. There's also a 3D carved fin on the opposite side to keep it symmetrical. The Damascus spacer that's also raised to act and mimic the fin of the fish. And when you turn it around, this fin on the show side is the release. And it turns, in, turns into a swordfish. Stainless Damascus blade made by Mike Norris. That is amazing. So you you present a very wide variety of knives. Uh, I know you have this very sculptural one. You have the the um, the bird knife. I'm sorry, I forgot the name of it. Uh, Alicanto, which is a mythical Chilean bird that had glowing eyes and glowing feathers. And then and then you have these very unique and innovative, but. Uh, almost innocuous looking switch army knives. Correct, yes. So the inspiration was for years people had considered trying to convert traditional switch 
army knives into automatics, but most of them having multi-blades, didn't have room inside for a spring. So I designed one on paper, drew it up, and the first one actually had a button. And after that, I developed a mechanism that was a scale release to make it more covert. So, uh, very sculptural and then very um, non-sculptural. Utilitarian. Utilitarian, that's word. the perfect way to put it. So, uh, it seems that there's an equal sized appetite for both. Yes, yes. Uh, recently I've discovered that 11 more states have loosened their automatic laws, so more and more people are comfortable with carrying one. The, uh, the Alicandra, Alicanto. Uh, the Alicanto knife, you had that up for uh, auction, right? Correct, yes. So I saw last night that it sold for a very handsome price, um, but I imagine that's got to be expected with the kind of work you put into these. Um, you never really know because it depends on who's in the room and who has seen it. So it's kind of a risk if you're going to put it up for auction. You know, sometimes you have a number in your head of what you think it's worth based on the amount of time and materials that you have into it. But it's only worth what someone's willing to pay for it. So you take that and say, okay, in the future, maybe I will just price it as opposed to putting it up for auction. But on the other side, it can go for more money than you originally anticipated. Before Blade Show, when you were on the when you came on the podcast, you gave me a lot of good advice for coming to my first Blade Show. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. You're actually. welcome. Because of that, I have food and water on me. <laughs> uh, but what's your favorite part of being here? Now that I'm here, I, I see how amazing it is. What's your favorite part of, of this show? A lot of it's meeting new people, but also seeing old people that I've seen for for 20 years. Like I can walk around the show and see other makers, material makers. And I've even seen families grow where I meet a couple and then the following year they come and they have a baby with them and by now they have a teenager with them and I've known them and see them only at this show but it's nice to see them every year. Great, so what can we expect from Chuck Adritus Knives in the coming year? Um, I'm probably going to build more Switch Army Switch Blades because the demand is very high. Um, but I also think I'm going to continue to concentrate on automatics and maybe do more figurals, more birds, and definitely more fish. Great. Well, thank you so much for talking with me today. Thank you, Bob. All it's right. Good to see you again. Good to see you too, sir. Do you carry multiple knives, then overthink which one to use when an actual cutting chore pops up? You're a knife junkie of the first order. So wandering aimlessly through Blade Show, I, I felt like a dog you know, oh, there's a squirrel, you know, I was just taken off after people I knew or things I wanted to see. And I bumped into David C. Anderson of Knife Center. And what a great guy. You know, I, it was so nice to meet him. What a warm character he is. And uh, so we, we, uh, I got him to say a few things to camera and also show off one of his knives. Uh, he's got a brand Nordic knives and check this out. I mean, this is such a beautiful, uh, in pocket EDC. Um, so here he is. I'm here with David C. Anderson of Knife Center. David, how's it going? Dude, I, it is so good to be back at Blade Show, man. I can't even tell you. What was it like having a year without it? This is my first. Oh, uh, dude, the great thing about Blade Show is it's not even, the first time you go, you're coming to see the knives. But the, the more you come, the less it's really about the knives, it's about the people that are here. And a year and a half of not seeing my people, my knife people, that's been the real hard part. And coming in here, shaking hands, giving hugs to all those guys, it's its alternately, it feels like a long time and it was just yesterday we were all here, you know? Well, I don't mean to veer away from people and go right to knives, but <laughs> I just had my, my first opportunity to check out one of your Nordic knives. Uh, it's your EDC that you're carrying. Would you it mind uh, taking it out and showing it off? I would not at all, so. Normally the uh, the sheath stays in the pocket when I draw it, but this is my pocket fixed blade, the Nordsmith Skipjack. First run edition with the green jig bone and the yellow, you know. A lot of people have to uh, really think about uh, what knife they're gonna carry at Blade Show, but for me, it's easy. I kind of have to self-promote, so go with the fancy Nordsmith. That is a beauty. Thank you, sir. Oh yeah. 
So what have you seen here this year that excites you for um, the upcoming year? It's so funny, people ask me that and my mind goes blank because I'm, I'm moving so fast at these things. My, uh, Thomas, my video guy's over here, we just got done filming an interview over here and we're back to back, one after the other. And whenever, whenever I get asked that question, I can't think of anything, man. But dude, the, the buzz this year is Magna Cut Steel. Super exciting. I got a I got a piece for myself for the uh, the collection. A nice dogwood fixed blade, and uh, yeah, that's that's going to be a game changing steel. We were just talking to uh, just bumped into Laren Thomas. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, he seems to be uh, pretty high on that right now. Yeah. Oh, and he should be. I've I've never seen buzz around a steel like this ever before. Okay, so David, if you could go to any stand and steal any knife and make make away with it, mm. <laughs> what would it be? Head over here to the Pops booth, Pops Knife Supply. There's a couple of knives by Andy Roy and Alan Searles that they brought this week that I'm not even gonna describe them to you. You have to go check them out. That's that's it, that's all I'm gonna say. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, David. It's a pleasure meeting you. As you just said, we're from the same state yeah. and we have to meet in Georgia. So go figure. It's been a pleasure, sir. Pleasure's mine, thank you very much. Do you use terms like handle the blade ratio, walk and talk, hair pop and sharp, or tank like? Then you are a dork and a knife junkie. Great bumping into David. Uh, I was on my way over to the the uh, Bastinelli booth and uh, bumped into him. So I'm so glad uh, he recognized me and and we uh, you know we had a great couple of minutes talking. The funny thing is is I kept shooting. Uh, we had to do a, a number of takes because I kept getting the Blade HQ booth in the background. And he's like, what are you doing? You're killing me. Stop this. So uh, so anyway, we, we re <laughs> reoriented at, to shoot that interview. After that, I went over to see the ever charming and uh, super deadly Bastion Cove of Bastinelli Knives. His, uh, his creations are just beautiful to look at. And you can tell just from looking at them how incredibly ergonomic and how incredibly effective they are. But once you get them in hand, like I had the, like I tried out the new Tellum, once you get them in hand, whoa, you know that this guy knows what he's doing. So it was great to meet him, uh, and shake his hand. And uh, man, he's a guy I'd like to hang out with. So here he is, Bastion Cove. I'm here with Bastion Cove of Bastinelli Creations. How's it going, sir? How you doing, good? Yeah. Good, how's Blade Show been? Really good, really busy, uh, really excited to come back, you know, at the Blade Show. It was a really interesting year, so, you know, like, uh, now we are pretty pretty happy to be here. Yeah, yeah. Making up for lost time. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so one thing I think of when I think of your work is how many different designs you come out with, how unique and beautiful they are. What do you have that's new this year? This year we work on some new fixed blade. We have some new folder. The new folder I have here is the Alpha one, you know, this one is um, just the same DNA as the red folder. You can see the handle is the same, same material manufactured by Lion Steel. Uh, really happy to work with them. Uh, the difference is going to be the material of the blade, the M390. We switch on the M390 and the design of the blade. You know, we work on some, you know, this design. We make already some curved blade like this for the scene and the Manaya. So we decided to, to, to assemble the balls of blade we already made in the past with this titanium and a new G10 under, just like this. So I see on the back side of the blade, uh, someone else's maker's mark. Yeah, that is for Fred Mastro. You know, we already make in the past uh, two blades for him, uh, one trainer and one fixed blade, and that is a new folder we make for Fred Mastro from Mastro Defense System. So the, it's the PT, or the PY, It's the right? PY, exactly. The PY, yeah. the beautiful, sleek Tanto that you Yeah, the protect, your, protect yourself. Yeah, protect yourself. So there's also one other fixed blade that I've been seeing you using a lot. Yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, can you show that off? Yeah, this one, I have this one for me. So this one is uh, the Telum. The good thing about the Telum is our interpretation of the dagger pocket. You know, something light, something comfortable, something you have with you, and you're able to forget you have that with you uh, because of the, of the weight. So M390 steel, PVD coating, and full Mikata handle with a full tank. So this one is really interesting. The blade is interesting because of the dagger. You know, you have one side and the other side to work on it. It can be a good utility too, but the concept of the sheath, that is interesting. You know, that is my collaboration with Tracadam, who is the owner of those kind of concepts, you know, of the sheath like this. He's really famous for that. So I use his clip for, the, for this concept. 
What is the concept behind that sheath? Behind that sheath is to just I just to, um, to, to, to able to carry a fixed blade uh, in the pocket on the grip squat position, you know, because when you have that, you have only that in, the, in, the, in, your, in, in your pocket, something like comfortable, but not only that, the concept of the sheath is to put one blade on one side and on the other side. You don't have to be focused on which way is your sheath, which way is the edge. It's comfortable for you if you are focused on something else. So track and end work on this kind of sheath things a while and uh, we are really excited to, to use this concept for the sheath. So that's why. Great. Uh, anything else you want to say about Blade Show? Or? Blade Show every time is a really, really good moment for us. We are really excited to see people here. Really excited to see people next year, you know. And uh, we have plenty of show coming. So, you know, so stay updated. And thank you so much to come to visit us. So Bastian had uh, two guys working, two, no, three different guys uh, working at his uh, booth. And I was glad my wife wasn't with me because it was like three French studs all, all muscly, Good with the knives, with the man bun, and uh, speaking with a French accent. I was like, man, I'm glad the wife stayed at home. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's not true. That's not true. I, I have no insecurities about anything. So then I moved on to American Blade Works table and uh, met up with Michael Martin, another great guy who's making these fantastic Model 1s. He's up to the V6, the version 6, and this is where he's stopping with it. He has really dialed it in and really perfected it. And, uh, well, here he is. All right, we're here with Michael Martin at Blade Show of American Blade Works. Michael, how's it going? I'm doing great. I'm glad to be here. So what are you highlighting uh, during this show? And tell us a little bit about uh, some of the updates here. Well, I'm currently on the V6 of my Model 1. I've uh, added a reversible pocket clip for the, all the lefties out there. I myself am a lefty, so that's definitely an improvement for me as well. I've also, uh, I'm starting to convert over. I've been doing S35. I'm uh, moving over to a, a 20 CV on the blade steel. Uh, I've also switched up. I was using titanium liners, and uh, so now I'm using a 17.4 uh, pH stainless. That way I can heat treat it. Uh, it makes it way more wear resistant, holds up a whole lot better. So I have the number five, uh, the version five. Uh, how does the six compare in your estimation? It seems like every version I try to improve things. Uh, the V6s are way smoother. Uh, like I say, it has a better blade steel. The reversible pocket clip is a big bonus for all the lefties out there. And uh, so I'm actually hoping that the V6 will be the very last version I have. I think I finally got it where everything on it's perfect. <laughs> So do you have uh, any other plans in the works? And what else do you have here on the table? These are some little pocket tools. They take X-Acto knife blades. So if you want a box cutter, or you can change the blade out. You break it and get it dull. You can just kind of open your boxes and just let it go and stick it back in your pocket. And then I'm also doing, I'm going to take the, uh, the Model 1, I'm going to do a titanium frame lock version. So that's uh, something I'm excited about. And I also have a new Model 3 that will come out in a couple of months. Ooh, that's cool. So that looks like it has a bit of a Warncliffe style blade. And uh, so uh, tell me about some of the challenges you're expecting to face doing a titanium frame lock as opposed to these liner locks. Well, I have my Model 2 that was a titanium frame lock, so it's not going to be that challenging I think it will be a, uh, a step up I'm still going to offer the same v6 but the, uh, the titanium frame lock is just a little something you know different for a little bit for everybody all right well Michael thank you so much for uh, talking with me is there anything else uh, you want to say or any any impressions from blade show yes yeah, definitely wow this is the first year I've uh, uh, not attended but the first year I've sold and it's uh, it's, it's been a great experience, and everybody is so nice and friendly. All the other knife makers that I met, you know, doing the setup and everything, it's uh, just been a great time. All right, well, best of luck, and we'll be checking back in with you a little later on. Thank you so much. All right. Do you carry multiple knives, then overthink which one to use when an actual cutting chore pops up? You're a knife junkie of the first order. Michael was there with his family, and they were all really nice folks. It was great to talk with them, too. Um, but as you can see from looking at this, he's 
he took a knife that was great at version three and was, I didn't know where he was going to go with it at version five. That's the one that I have. And then in version six, I, I was shocked by the action, uh, even better than the one I have. And then, you know, the reversible pocket clip, which doesn't even look reversible. It's not like there's some, uh, extra screw holes or anything like that on the other side. Uh, they, so I think Michael, uh, is doing, doing the, doing it the right way. He's listening to his customers and really dialing in his design. And that's great for the customer because they get what they want, but it's also great for him. It's smart, makes smart business sense because, you know, he can get the knife in just the right spot and then just make them exactly how people want them. And uh, that's what he's doing. So smart move, Michael. And what a pleasure meeting you, sir. Next, I went over to another guy, a guy you know from, from Thursday Night Knives and from his own postings on Instagram. I went to Ben Belkin's booth, Jack Wolf Knives. Oh my goodness gracious, is he doing it right? Uh, so Ben Belkin, if you don't know, he's a, a knife collector turned knife company owner, Jack Wolf Knives. And he has uh, designed 12 knives, I believe, um, and has had uh, six prototypes made by Riot. They are integral, uh, integral bolster liner um, uh, slip joints, all in traditional style, uh, patterns, which he has somewhat redesigned and restyled in a, in a modern context. They are beautiful. So he had all of the uh, prototypes out, and uh, I think he's expecting to bring them to market in the fourth quarter, and Riot made them. So you know that they're amazing. They're as amazing as they look. And uh, you'll have a chance to check them out right here. All right, we're here with Ben Belkin of Jack Wolf Knives. Ben, how are you doing, man? Give us an update. I'm having a great show, Bob. I was glad to finally meet you in person, and I couldn't be more excited to be here. So allow me to give you an update. So if you're watching Bob's show, you've heard me talk about the knives. You've seen me show them as a sneak peek. You might have seen them on Instagram. Well, I have them all here today. We've got seven different models. Just as a quick recap, we're a traditional slip joint in modern materials featuring a hollow ground M390 blade, titanium liners with integral fluted bolsters and micarta scales. We've had really great feedback from everyone so far at the show, but I wanted to show you something I hadn't showed anybody yet. We want to do something special with our packaging. If you're familiar with buying Great Eastern Cutlery or other American traditional knives, they come in a cardboard tube with a pop top, and the knife will be wrapped in wax paper. Well, my spin on it is to use an aluminum tube with a screw top cap. Instead of wax paper, they'll be in a microfiber cloth with my logo engraved on it. In addition, inside you'll receive a leather slip that the knife can ride in and three stickers, two of which feature my logo and one of which is going to be a unique art design specific to the production run. Now, I hired a comic book artist named Sean Tiffany who's worked with Marvel Comics to bring my label concepts to life. We developed a character named Jack Wolf, so here he is. And he's featured on each and every label. What we're going to do is, every time a production run is redone, we're going to change the art. So the tube will be collectible because once our production run, it'll never be reproduced the same way again. In addition, we're going to change a feature about the knife every production run. So if it has a crescent nick, it'll get a long pull. Or if it has a spear point blade, maybe we'll switch it to a clip point blade. Or maybe we'll make it a shadow, or maybe we'll delete a bolster. Something will change, so we're never making the same thing twice. So you're going to get a collectible knife, a collectible tube, and really just want to give you a unique experience. So how's the feedback been so far? Just beyond my wildest expectations. People have been really stoked about our packaging. Of course, the knives speak for themselves because the quality is there. People love the walk and talk. People love the flush springs. They love the traditional shapes. So show me, uh, show me one of your favorite prototypes here. So All right, sure. So this is a boy's knife. It's three and a half inches closed, features a clip point blade, as I said, hollow ground M390, reminiscent of the Great Eastern Cutlery number 15 pattern. Beautiful, man. Let me see the spine. One other thing we did here at the show that I think was kind of cool, 
you know, we ask people to follow our social media, but I don't like to ask for something without giving something back. So we invented the jack sack. And in the jack sack, you're going to get a 8 inch by 8 inch microfiber cloth, bright green with my logo laser engraved on it. There's three stickers inside, two logo stickers, which you guys have seen me mail to people with handwritten notes, and also a Blade Show 2021 sticker that's exclusive and will never be made again. And an airhead candy, because who doesn't like an airhead candy? All right, man, so uh, what, when can we look forward to seeing these hit the market? Yes, yeah, so I hope that Q4 of this year I have inventory, subject to perfecting a couple little tweaks on these prototypes and the production time cycle. All right, man, anything else you want to say to the, to the viewers of the Knife Junkie Podcast? I just want to thank all of you for being so supportive and for being awesome. You guys are the best community in the world, and I really look forward to meeting y'all at my earliest convenience. Visit The Knife Junkie at thenifejunkie.com to catch all of our podcast episodes, videos, photos, and more. You can see how Ben has really taken his entrepreneurial spirit and his business experience and turned making a, a knife company from scratch. He's been doing it the right way, let me just say. All of the, all of the packaging, all of the brand building around these incredible knives I think he is going to skyrocket when these things are released because really all you got to know is the beautiful design, all of the extras, and then Riot's build. You know it's going to be an amazing knife. So it's great to be able to just be able to look at something, say online, and then know if you like that design, it's going to be a fantastic knife. So Ben has done it right, and I really look forward to Jack Wolf uh, hitting the ground running. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. Thank you for joining me for this very special edition of the Knife Junkie podcast, Blade Show, 40 years, Blade Show 2021. It's been an, an incredible experience for me. I really look forward to coming back next year. I think a couple of things I've learned are uh, at next year, I will wear more comfortable shoes. <laughs> uh, I was walking around in boots, uh, pretty comfortable boots, but uh, after, you know, seven hours on my feet, you know, you get a couple of chances to sit. Uh, they are few and far between far and few between and uh, you know very little chance to eat at least I did so I took Chuck Gadritis's uh, advice I, I brought water and food in my backpack and you know kept myself going that way so uh, next year more comfortable shoes next year save and budget differently you know maybe uh, maybe a few less knife purchases leading up to blade show uh, and uh, and then I'll have the opportunity to 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 maybe get a couple of other things that that uh, catch my eye. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll try and book a room in that hotel that's right attached to the convention center. But I am sure, like uh, everyone has told me, it books up before, you know, before the show is even over, it's booked for the next year. So yeah, you know, first world problems. Anyway, uh, if you've watched this far, I appreciate it. Thank you, and thank you to everyone that uh, that came up and introduced themselves to me. It was really a humbling pleasure. You know, I'm uh, sometimes I feel like I'm sitting here barking into the dark about this stuff, and then to have people um, recognize me because I put my mug on the on on the internet here uh, and come up and introduce themselves was just great. The greatest part about Blade Show, for sure. Like everyone said, it's not a cliche. The greatest part about Blade Show is the people. So for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, and he's going to be doing a lot of extra work this time, um, I'm Bob DeMarco saying thank you so much for checking us out here on the Knife Junkie podcast. And most assuredly, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. 
For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.